Well, hello everybody. This is Rich with Capital B Supply. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be working on assembling um, some Ross Round Home Honey frames and getting them ready to put out um, with the bees. A little bit of history on Ross Rounds. Uh, Ross Rounds were originally invented back in the 1950s, late 1950s, by a gentleman um, uh, who I'm going to abbreviate his name is Dr. Z. Uh, he had actually came up with a concept of, and it's about the time when plastics were becoming um, kind of a more plastic injection molding stuff was becoming a very common or more common uh, thing, and a lot of products were switching and being made um, out of plastic. And what he did is uh, Dr. Z came up with um, this product. This is an older style, what now today would be a, called a Ross Round frame, but they're actually called Cobana frames. And this one um, is uh, said stamped uh, Cobana Products, Dearborn, Michigan. Um, the original Cabana frames, you can see the color here was kind of a white color. It didn't clean this one up at all, so it's still got some comb and stuff in it from the last round that we used it. Um, the Cobana frames did not have a uh, rest on them, to, didn't have an ear on the frame to sit on a frame rest. The box that you used with these actually had an L bracket on the bottom, and then the frames would sit on, an, on that angle piece inside of your uh, Cobana Super. Um, so Dr. Z, he had invented this and then um, time went along and he didn't really uh, either have the desire or the expertise to try to commercialize this um, concept. And he sold it off to uh, another individual. And, and at the same time also there was competing products came out. We have some other frames that um, in the interim were made by a company um, the name escapes me right now, but it was um, uh, something Valley Honey uh, out of Ohio. I've got those frames. They're actually out in the field right now in, in, a, in, a, in a couple boxes of those we have, a couple of uh, supers like that we have. But in any event, um, so what's happening is that Dr. Z's idea was kind of being um, manufactured by other people as well. And he decided, well, uh, he wasn't going to pursue it all that much. He sold the idea off. And he sold it off to um, Thomas Ross. And Thomas Ross went ahead and um, enhanced the design a little bit. There's a few things that are different between all these, but the, the current uh, rings and stuff fit all of them, as you'll see. Um, Ross added um, a support so you could put these into a box with a frame rest. They don't fit in a standard Honey Super, though. They have to fit into a modified box. The box is about four and a half inches high. Uh, these frames are shorter than a standard length strip frame, so the box, uh, the frame rests are actually inset. This is an old box, probably from about the 1960s, early 1970s. You can kind of see how this has been modified. This would be the normal length strip length with a normal length strip frame rest, and then this has a spacer put in on the ends uh, to provide space so that these frames can actually seat in here and sit on the sit on the frame rest that way. So. Um, they're not, they don't, they take a, a non-standardized type box. They take a special box for actually making them. So Ross went along and eventually he obtained um, patent um, protection for the frames. And a matter of fact, um, this one here is a Thomas B. Ross um, visit check. And um, uh, um, I think this is branded what? Uh, made in the USA, uh, Mansillion, Ohio. Um, so different variations of these things that you'll see, but this is kind of the, um, the current, uh, most current version of it. Uh, the patent protection ultimately uh, ran its course, and now today there's all kinds of competing products on the market that are these um, uh, kind of like pre-pack um, rounds. So there's uh, the hog halves, there's the bio packs, um, a variety of different things out there in the market um, today. And the very traditional um, uh, basswood type sections that were developed in the uh, late 1800s, uh, it's getting harder and harder to get those uh, sections anymore today. So these systems are fairly simple. Uh, one of the things that is 
maybe a disadvantage of these systems is that there are a lot of components and a lot of consumables with them. The intent is that um, you assemble this thing with a set of rings and then and a piece of foundation. The bees will build their honeycomb uh, in these uh, different round areas, round sections. And then when you go to uh, harvest this out, you pull out the round section and you drop it directly into a round container, put a label on it, uh, and you're done. And it's always a good idea to freeze them, uh, freeze them in advance as well, just to kill any wax moss or anything like that. So this is a um, this is a round section. So uh, regardless, if you're using the very original ones, or if you're using any one of the, um, I guess would be intermediate competitors. Uh, they had very similar designs, or if you're using the modern versions, what you need is you need consumables, and this is an example of that. These are the rings that actually go in, and it takes two rings per round section, essentially. So these rings, uh, one of the confusing things sometimes is the uh, configuration of the rings. You can see they kind of got this uh, deeper side, then there's some shallow portions, and there's a notch. The only reason the notch is in there is so that they still fit some of the older style frames. So for instance, these original, um, actually take that back, it's not, uh, it's not the original ones, not the Cobanos, it's the, um, the Valley, uh, Honey Valley ones uh, that have a, another pin in there and they need, that, need this notch in order to fit the pin. But the way that this fits is this goes down. So this frame once together, there's your left and right halves. I just split the halves apart like that. The ring has to go such that this will fit in a pocket. So I've cleaned these up a little bit, but um, there's a set of notches here, and then this ring sits down in there, and you push it down in like so, and that's how it lines up in the, uh, in the frame. And you do that uh, all the way along here, and you pop your rings in, and make sure that they're seated down in there. Uh, as you do this. So I'm going to load this one up with rings. And once I got the rings in there, I'll put the foundation. The rings are uh, generally not reusable. Uh, the bees will take and they attach the comb and stuff to them. Some people will, if you know, if it's for your own um, comb sections, they'll just, uh, after you eat the comb out, then they'll try to scrape them up and reuse them. But really, um, I think in some ways that the manufacturer of these, which the company's been sold a couple of times now over, and there's a younger couple running the company now, um, but in some days I think that the that uh, this was a boon for the plastic companies because they could make all these um, make all these parts and sell a lot of plastic parts. So now I've got the rings in. Notice the smooth sides of the rings are up, and the notch sides. Now if you can see here, these frames. They actually have kind of like these um, depressions in the side so the ring has to be such that that flushes out um, so they only fit in there well you can fit them in the wrong way but um, make sure you've got that so that this here notch side notch side goes down all right once you've got that then you're going to use a piece of foundation now you can use different things here i generally uh, use cut comb but you can also use thin surplus foundation and there is comb that is um, specifically sized to these, but anytime you specifically size stuff, then you end up um, end up with a um, premium price to it. So what I end up with is I'm going to set this in here just so it uh, lines up and covers all the rounds. Okay, so it's end to end covered. And I use a little oval overhang. I'm going to trim it, and then I set this other half on. And there's just two pins that line it up. And you line it up and you just press it on there like so. <clears throat> now your foundation is capped it between the, between the sections, okay, between the halves. You see it overhangs a little bit. So I'm gonna grab a, I'm gonna grab a cutter. I'm gonna grab a cutter and I'm just gonna trim. So yeah, I have a little wasted foundation here, but you know, I melt that down and use it for other stuff anyway. Uh, you can use, this is cut comb again, you can also, if you want, the comb, cut comb's a little thicker, so it'll give you a thicker midrib in your comb. If you want something a little lighter in the midrib, then use thin surplus foundation, and that works very well also. So once you've got that together, 
then um, you put it into your Ross round box. Now these only fit regardless of which ones it is. If it's a newer style or some of the very originals, they're designed to interlock together. So let me do another one here real quick. And I will show you how they interlock as I do this. So, rings in. Now what I had done too is um, I had scraped these frames down and uh, sometimes the bees will put a little propolis in where the rings seat down. So I usually go through, I scrape my frames down. Um, I take and I typically wash them up too, rinse them off at least uh, before I take them out for the bees and stuff like that. And I'll put this other one together. And if you got a little propolis down in there, um, you can pop that out. Now we'll do a video later on. We've got a bunch of these out in the field right now that we're, um, bees are actively filling. And so we'll do a video on how to harvest these out uh, later on. So there's my frame, grab a piece of cut comb. I'm gonna lay that on there, make sure it covers all of my cells. And we give it a little overhang top to bottom. And then I'm gonna pop this on here. And get this lined up, make sure you get lined up. Give it a little press. Everything lined up, got pressed. Trim that edge, trim that edge, and I'm good to go. So now what I'm saying about this is these lock together. So in the center rib, there's actually like a zigzag in there. And so when these sit in the box, they lock together like so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and we get the rest of my rounds together and then uh, we'll get them into the box and get them ready to go out in the field. All right, I finished putting the foundation on all of my Ross round frames. I got those all together. I also finished up my last couple of Kobani. Um, uh, frames, the predecessors to the Ross rounds. Uh, so that's all set to go. Um, now I'd mentioned these interlock together and so they only fit in the super um, one way. The intent is that <clears throat> you know so there's kind of an open side and then there is uh, a baffle side and what happens is when these seat together that creates um, kind of that barrier and forces to, the bees to contain the to the round section itself. So um, that's how the uh, that's how the system goes together. The last phase of this is, is once you have them in the box, then this particular box I don't have it for, but what you have is to fill this last gap, there is a follower board that slips down in here, and then there are two springs uh, that fit in there. And what that does, it keeps pressure and keeps all these frames pushed across. Now, we've been experimenting a little bit here in the last few weeks, um, and some of my original boxes that I had that had these Kobani um, original uh, frames in them, those used nine uh, round section frames across. Uh, in today's world, most of the time when you see Ross round boxes, they're running eight. But what I found is that you can run nine in there uh, if you take out or if you have a box that does not have the side um, spacer in it, the frames will fit incredibly tight and that's good. That's what you want with nine, um, depending upon the thickness of your foundation that you're using. I'm using cut combs so that's a little bit thicker and so it pushes those frames out. And when I try to put nine in a box, it is a very, very, very snug fit for the last one. Um, if you're running thin surplus, it probably wouldn't be quite as snug. The, the issue is, and I think the reason why originally these were run nine instead of eight, is because you had you could get nine in a box. Uh, but then uh, when it comes to harvesting these out, that becomes a little bit of a problem. So it's easier probably to run eight and put in a follower board and springs. You pull the follower board, and you can just very easily go along and break your section frames out. These fit very tight end to end. One of the things I, um, don't 100% understand about Ross round frames is that this uh, frame um, extension or ear, whatever you want to call it on the end, is very, very short. And I don't know why they didn't make this even another eighth of an inch longer. It would have been perfect because then it would fit and you've got a little bit of room. 
but I think their intention is, is they gotta make sure all this stuff lines up and stays tight. So like for instance, in these boxes here, this is a very snug fit and, and they get these dropped down in, especially as the bees propolize, you know, uh, your frame rests and box sides and, and the barriers and stuff like that. So, but that's the system. Uh, it works very, very well. I've been doing Ross rounds for a number of years. Um, people will say, you know, well, uh, they may put a Ross round super on and uh, they'll say, well, the bees aren't, aren't touching it. It's no different than any other comb honey production uh, that you do. If you're gonna make comb honey, you need to have incredibly strong hives or you need to compress the bees down, compress the brood nest down so it's uh, boiling over with bees uh, and you need to have good flow. Now, there are some tricks you can do uh, as well. You can temporarily make a hive uh, queenless uh, or reduce the amount of brood that the queen is producing. You could cage her in the hive. So they're, they're not queenless at that point, but she's caged or confined to a frame. And by doing that, what happens is, is that now the nurse bees don't have a uh, new brood to take care of. And what they end up doing is uh, being recruited over earlier to being foragers. So you have more foraging force at that point. And you do have young bees uh, who are good wax builders, which you also need uh, for doing this. So compressing the brood nest down, confining the queen, temporarily taking the queen out to make the hive queen less, uh, so that, um, again, the bees convert over to foraging. Uh, those are some of the tricks you can use, but in general, uh, strong, strong colonies uh, with lots of bees and lots of young bees in them as well. Uh, your 12 to 18 day old bees are your best wax makers, and you'll make um, comb honey without issue. The other thing is, is that generally you want to have just comb supers on. You don't want to necessarily be intermixing um, uh, frames that you're going to be using for liquid extraction and for comb. Get the bees forced to concentrate on, on one box at a time. You've got 32 or 36 sections, depending on how many frames you're putting in these boxes. And that's a lot of, a lot of combs uh, for the bees to kind of focus on. So a little bit of background on the round system and how to put it all together.